The uh, diffusion couple technique is a powerful experimental method which provides a framework to determine interdiffusion coefficients in solid solution systems such as alloys, glasses, cements, etc. As an example, consider the interdiffusion of um, iron, magnesium, calcium mixtures in garnet, a precious stone consisting of a deep red vitreous silicate mineral. Garnets are nesosilicates, a group of silicate minerals that have been used since the Bronze Age as gemstones and abrasives. A diffusion couple with two different compositions on the left and right hand sides are brought into contact at time t0. The composition profiles on either side of the interspace marker shown by the uh, dashed lines here are monitored at various time intervals. As an example, the composition profiles at uh, time t is 100 hours are shown here in this, uh, in this graph. And uh, if we observe the uh, composition um, profiles, we note that uh, magnesium experiences an undershoot and an overshoot in its uh, composition profile in respectively the left and right compartments. It is also interesting to note that the uh, driving force for magnesium is just 1% significantly smaller than the driving forces for uh, iron and calcium. In composition space, the uh, composition trajectories follow a serpentine path. My objective today is to understand the uh, reasons behind the uphill diffusion of uh, magnesium. We also examine the uh, rationale for the uh, serpentine equilibration trajectory in composition space. For background uh, to the theory I'm going to discuss today, refer to my publications, Chemical Society Reviews 2015, Chemical Engineering Science 2019. Watch also my presentation, Uphill Diffusion, on my YouTube channel. We begin by uh, examining the classic set of experiments reported by Lawrence Stamper Darkin in 1949. Let us examine a set of experiments conducted in 1949 by L. S. Darkin. The experiments were carried out with two bars of steel that are brought into contact with each other. On the left side, we have uh, the composition of 0.48% uh, carbon, 3.8% silicon, and the remainder iron. The right hand side, the bar contains 0.45% carbon, practically the same as uh, in the left uh, bar. Significantly lower amount of silicon, 0.05%, and the remainder iron. The two bars are raised to a temperature of 1323 Kelvin by placing them in, in a furnace for 13 days and thereafter 
the bars are quenched and the compositions of uh, carbon along the distance from uh, the interface measured on both sides. We note that uh, the uh, diffusion profile or the concentration profile for carbon exhibits a minimum and then it increases near the surface and then decreases to uh, the value that is uh, equal to the initial value. So in this region the carbon atoms experience uphill diffusion from a low concentration of carbon to a high concentration of carbon. This is a technique used for surface hardening because the surface now contains a higher portion of uh, carbon and is harder than the bulk that is tougher. So carburization using this technique in involves exploitation of the principle of uphill diffusion. Let us examine the darken experiments in a little bit more detail. The uh, addition of uh, silicon to the left compartment or the left bar increases the escaping tendency of carbon and uh, therefore influences the activity. The uh, activity of carbon in the uh, in the mixture of carbon, silicon and iron is a function of both the weight percent silicon and the weight percent carbon. For a given weight percent carbon, the addition of silicon increases the activity of carbon. If we uh, replot the experimental data in terms of the activity against the uh, distance from the weld interface, we note that the uh, The activity progresses monotonously from a high activity region to a low activity region and does not show any minimum or maximum. In other words, the uh, experience of uh, uphill diffusion is not observed when the uh, use activity gradients as uh, driving forces for transfer of carbon from one uh, compartment to the other. On the basis of his experiments, Lawrence Stamper Darkin drew the following set of uh, conclusions that also serve as a takeaways for this presentation. Firstly, the driving force in an isothermal diffusion process may be regarded as the gradient of the chemical potential. For a system with a more than two components, it is no longer necessarily true that a given element tends to diffuse toward a region of lower concentration even within a single phase region. The word single phase is quite important, as we shall see later. The departure from the behavior of an ideal solution may be so great that the concentration gradient and the chemical potential gradient or activity gradient may be of different sign 
thus giving rise to uphill diffusion. With the insights gained from the classic darkened paper, let us revisit the uphill diffusion in Garnett for the ternary mixture of um, iron, magnesium, and um, calcium silicates as uh, observed in the opening slide of this presentation. There are two independent driving forces, and these could be uh, expressed in terms of the uh, atom fractions of components one and the gradients in the atom fraction of component two, dx1 dz, dx2 dz, and the uh, fluxes of components one and two may be related to the uh, gradients in the atom fraction by defining a two-dimensional square matrix of um, fictive facilities that uh, have um, off-diagonal elements D12 and D21. The uh, experimental data is quantitatively described by the fictive fusivity matrix that has values as shown here. We note that the uh, cross coefficient D21 is larger in magnitude and opposite in sign to the diagonal element D22. And uh, in the system numbering, component 2 is magnesium. And the large negative off diagonal element is uh, the root cause of the undershoot and overshoot in the uh, composition profile for magnesium as it approaches equilibrium. There are two eigenvalues of this uh, fig diffusivity matrix. The larger one has the uh, magnitude 6.84 times 10 minus 19 square meters per second. The uh, second eigenvalue, the smaller one, has uh, a magnitude of 1.905 10 to the uh, minus 20 square meters per second. Corresponding to each of these two eigenvalues, we have uh, the eigenvectors. Corresponding to the larger eigenvalue, we have uh, the fast eigenvector that is drawn by the continuous red lines here. That's the eigenvector. And uh, the blue line represents the slogan, slow eigenvector that corresponds to the uh, smaller of the uh, two eigenvalues. For background uh, to the theory of uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors and how uh, these influence diffusional phenomena refer to my uh, textbook published in 1993. What we note is that in composition space, the initial trajectories are dictated by the fast eigenvector. As uh, the system approaches equilibrium, the composition trajectories are dictated by the slow eigenvector. So, uh, The uh, composition trajectories are like close to the like close to the fast eigenvector during the initial stages, and then switch allegiance to the slow eigenvector as uh, time progresses and equilibrium is approached. Further background information is available in my textbook and in this paper published in Chemical Engineering Science.